All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about perpetuities. So previously we discussed how to find the present value of an annuity or a series of payments. And that present value essentially represented how much money we needed to invest today in order to finance those payments in the future. And so if you haven't seen our lesson on finding the present value of an annuity, I'll have that linked here for you to click on because that's going to be important to know how to do first. But if you have seen that, or if you are familiar with the present value of annuities, you know that the formula for the present value is equal to this notation A, and then we have the number of periods N, and our interest rate I that has the same frequency as the payment periods, right? And this is equal to one minus the present value factor to the power of N divided by I. And so we are familiar with this notation, but what if we wanted N, our number of payments, to be infinite? What if we wanted n to equal infinity or have a series of payments that never ends, right? An infinite series of payments. What would we do in that case? The present value would be equal to a and then n would be infinity and we'd still have our interest rate i. But infinity is not a finite number, right? It's a value that represents a value that is increasing or infinitely getting larger. And so we can't just plug it into n in our scenario here. And so we're going to have to use a limit to figure out what this is equal to because the limit allows us to see what happens as a value approaches infinity. And so that's what we're going to look at in this case. This will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity for this function, one minus v to the power of n divided by i. And so if we rewrite what v or our present value factor is equal to in this case, we'll add that this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one minus one divided by one plus i to the power of n divided by i. And so this is the part of our function that we are interested in because it has n, right? We're looking at this function as n approaches infinity. And so let's look at this term a little bit closer. If we have one divided by one plus i to the power of n, what happens as this value of n gets larger? Well, let's say just for this example that i is equal to 0.05. And so that would mean that we'd have one divided by 1.05 to the power of n. And so what we'll do here is we'll try different values of n and make them increasingly larger and see what happens to this value right here. So if we let n equal one, this expression one divided by 1.05 to the first power would be equal to 0.95238. All right, and so now let's try a bigger value of n. How about if n is equal to 10? If we plug that, into this expression, if we have one divided by 1.05 to the 10th power, that's going to be equal to 0.61391. And then let's try one more value. Let's do n equal to 100, right? Now we're getting even larger, right? We went from one to 10, and now we're going from 10 to 100. So we're getting a lot bigger now. So now let's see what happens as n gets even larger. If we plug 100 into this expression, one divided by 1.05 to the 100th power, will be equal to 0.0076. And so now each of these values is rounded, but I gave you enough decimals that you can see what's going on here. As we pick larger values of n, the value of our expression is getting smaller. We went from 0.952 to 0.613, and now we're at 0.007. And if we were to pick even larger values of n, if we went with 1,000, this value would be even smaller. Our values are getting smaller and smaller towards zero. So what we see here is as n approaches infinity or as n gets larger, this value is becoming nothing. It's becoming zero. It is a negligible amount. And that's also going to be true for any value of our interest rate that we pick in this case. So it doesn't matter that it's 0.05. The same would be true for 0.04 or 0.07. The value would still be getting smaller towards zero as n gets larger. And so this expression right here is becoming zero. And so what that means is that we can evaluate this limit by just writing that this is equal to zero. And so what we'll have here is that this is going to be equal to one minus zero divided by i, which is equal to one divided by i. So if we have an infinite series of payments or an annuity that continues on forever, we can find the present value of that annuity by taking one divided by the interest rate in that scenario. And that's provided that your interest rate has the same frequency as your payment period. So for example, if you wanna receive those payments every year, your interest rate needs to be an annual interest rate. It needs to occur every year. 
And so we actually call this scenario where we have an infinite series of payments that never ends a perpetuity. And so the present value of a perpetuity is equal to one divided by i. And you could also denote it with this notation where you have a and then infinity and this bar in i, but this is the equation you would use to calculate that present value. And so then of course, just like you multiply this formula by the amount that your payments are, right? We have equal payments of some amount x. You would also multiply this by that value of the payments as well. So it works exactly the same as this formula, except we just don't have that present value factor. It's just one divided by i. And so this is the formula you are going to want to know in regards to perpetuities. And so a perpetuity is just a stream of payments that is infinite, right? So when you're trying to find that present value, you are looking for the amount to invest today such that with your given interest rate, that the account is self-sufficient, meaning that it is generating enough interest per payment period to be able to afford continuous payments of a particular amount. And so now let's look at an example problem where we use this formula. So here's our example. We wanna find the present value of a perpetuity that pays $10 per year indefinitely at an annual rate of 4%. Now, this is kind of redundant saying that it is a perpetuity that pays indefinitely, but I'm just trying to get the point across here that these payments never end, right? A perpetuity is a stream of payments that does not end. It goes on forever. That's important to know. And so to find a present value in this scenario, we'll use our formula that the present value is equal to one divided by i, but remember that you can multiply this by x, which is the amount of that payment that you're going to be receiving indefinitely. And so in this case, let's write down what we know. We know that the payments are going to be $10 per year. So that means that X will be equal to 10. And we know that we have an annual rate of 4%. So that means that I is going to be equal to 4% or 0.04 in decimal form. And so we actually already have everything we need to calculate the present value of this perpetuity. We have what X is equal to and what our interest rate is equal to and the interest rate is annual and our payments are annual. And so the interest rate has the same frequency as the payment cycle. And so we can use this formula. And so if we plug in what we know, we'll have that the present value is equal to 10 times one divided by 0.04. And that will be equal to 10 times 25. One divided by 0.04 is 25. And so the present value will be equal to $250. That is the answer to this problem. So if you have a 4% annual interest rate and you wanna be paid $10 per year forever from an account, you would have to deposit $250 today to make that possible. This would continue to generate enough interest given this 4% rate every year so that you can continually take out $10 without running out of money. Let's look at one more example for this lesson to really nail down the concept of what a perpetuity is and how it's different from the annuities we have looked at so far. So here we wanna find the present value of an annuity that pays $20 per year for 15 years starting one year from today with an effective annual interest rate of 5%. Compare this to the present value of a perpetuity with the same payment amount and interest rate. All right, so in this case, we have a normal annuity that has a finite or a set amount of payments, right? We have $20 per year for 15 years starting one year from today, and then we wanna compare the present value of that stream of payments to a perpetuity where the payments go on forever, right? We will get $20 per year forever, not for 15 years. And so let's do that. Let's start by calculating the present value of the annuity, and then we'll calculate the present value of the perpetuity, and let's see how different these values are. So in this case, we know that X, or the amount of our payments, is equal to 20, right? We have annuity that pays $20 per year, our N for our annuity or our number of payments will be 15 because we're getting $20 per year for 15 years. So N will be equal to 15. And then we also know that we have an effective annual interest rate of 5%. And so that means that I will be equal to 5% or 0.05 in decimal form. And so now just a quick note before we move on with this problem, you didn't see this wording in the previous problem, but it is important to know that just like how an annuity, in order to calculate the present value using that formula, needs to be starting one year from today, a perpetuity also requires that as well. At least the type of perpetuity and annuity we are looking at right now. The kind that we are calculating at the moment requires that the first payment be made one year from today. And so that is true for this type of annuity and for perpetuities that we're learning about right now. 
And so now let's calculate the present value of our annuity. We'll have that the present value is equal to x times a and then n and the interest rate, which if we plug in everything we know, will be equal to 20 times a and then we'll have 15 and our interest rate of 0.05 and that will be equal to 20 times one minus the present value factor to the 15th power divided by 0 0.05. And then if we rewrite our present value factor, this is equal to 20 times one minus one divided by 1.05 to the power of 15 divided by 0 0.05. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, the present value of that annuity will be equal to $207 and 59 cents. So that is the answer or the present value of our annuity that has a finite amount of payments of 15. And so now let's compare this. Let's find the present value of a perpetuity where these payments go on forever. So we'll have the present value is equal to x times, and then we're gonna have a, and then an infinite amount of payments and the interest rate, and that will be equal to x times one divided by i. Right, that is the formula that we found earlier. And so this will be equal to 20 times one divided by 0 0.05, and one divided by 0 0.05 is equal to 20. So this is equal to 20 times 20, which is equal to $400 exactly. And so this is the present value of the perpetuity in this case. So you can see how much more money you need to deposit today in order for these amount of payments to be infinite. Right, this is how much we needed to deposit to have enough for 15 years, and this is the amount we need to deposit for it to be forever. It's almost double, right? We have 207 and 400, so it's a lot more that you would need. And that's only $20 per year. Imagine how large this value would have to get if you wanted $20 per month or $100 a month. This value will get pretty large, which is why good perpetuities are going to cost a lot. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson on perpetuities. If you wanna see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.